Clinical Psychology Studies, Rosenham, 1973. Aim to see if the sane could be distinguished from the insane using the DSM classification system and, if they can be differentiated, how sanity can be identified. Method, field experiment. Field experiment. Procedure. Rosenhan sent eight pseudo patients to 12 different hospitals. The groups consisted of three women and five men. All of the patients gave false names and those in the medical profession gave a false occupation. Each pseudo patient said that they could hear an unfamiliar voice of the same sex saying empty, hollow, and thud. Apart from these details, all the information the pseudo patients gave were true, including details about their relationships, childhood, and education. As soon as they were admitted to a psychiatric ward, the pseudo patients stopped any abnormal symptoms though some did later admit to acting in a nervous manner at the start of the study, partly because they thought they would be exposed as frauds. They took part in ward activities, spoke to staff and fellow patients as they would normally and respond to instructions from staff. Some wrote down their observations about the ward, the patients and the staff. If asked how they felt, they said they felt fine and no longer had any symptoms. In some hospitals, the pseudo-patients approach members of staff with a request, such as, pardon me, could you tell me when I am likely to be discharged? Results. All, those pseudo all the pseudo-patients were admitted and none were detected as being sane. All but one of them had a diagnosis of schizophrenia in remission upon leaving the hospital. They stayed in the hospital for between 7 and 52 days, the average being 19 days. In three hospitals, 25 out of the 118 patients were suspicious about the insanity of the pseudo-patients. Conclusion Rosenhan concluded that staff in psychiatric hospitals were unable to distinguish those who were sane from those who were insane, and that the DSM was therefore not a valid measurement of mental illness at the time. Strengths the study was carried out in a actual psychiatric hospitals using real staff who were unaware of the study so it has ecological validity. As a range of hospitals were used from around the country including old and new and using different methods of funding the, res the results could be generalized to other psychiatric hospitals at the time. Another strength is the number of days the pseudo patients stayed in the hospital is an objective measurement and the fact that the pseudo patients could see what life was like from a patient's perspective adds validity. Weaknesses Whilst the pseudo-patient's observations would try to be objective, some subjectivity and the emotions of the pseudo-patients could have influenced these observations. There are ethical problems as the hospital staff were deceived about the patient's symptoms, nor did they know that they were in a study so were unable to give consent. However, Rosenhan did not name any staff or hospitals so there was no risk of identification. Another problem is that all doctors either play either a physical or mental illness, tend to play safe and go for the most serious or common diagnosis before ruling it out, rather than immediately trying to see if the patient is faking it. Psychiatrists have to be especially careful, as if they release someone with a mental disorder, there can be serious consequences, for them or for others. The pseudo-patients insisted on being admitted to the hospital, which is an important symptom in itself, so the voices were not the only symptom they presented, nor was their behaviour totally normal once they were admitted, as they didn't say that they were in fact normal and insist on being released, which is what most normal people would do. Psychiatrists point out that the DSM has been revised since Rosenhan's study, and such results are less likely. Another study now is therefore unlikely to replicate the results. Spitzer argues that the diagnosis of schizophrenia in remission was in fact due to how pseudo patients behaved and not the fact that the psychiatrists couldn't tell that they were normal, as it is a very rare diagnosis for real patients. Therefore, he argues the psychiatrists recognized there was something different about the pseudo patients.